Hey friends, Elizabeth here from Plant-Based Bride, back again with another video. And today I'm super excited to set up my brand new bullet journal for 2022. I'm gonna use this notebook from January through to the end of June, and I'm excited to show you my setup. As you can see, I'm using yet another of my collaboration notebooks with Archer and Olive. This is the vegan leather olive branch notebook that I designed, and it's in the B5 size, of course, my favorite size. So I'm super excited to use this one. The last one I used was the Cloth Sunrise notebook, and I'll use the other two notebooks that I designed with them for my next two bullet journals, so each of them get their own six months of glory. For the concept of this setup, or the theme, I guess. I was inspired by the setup that I did in my last bullet journal. I'll link my last bullet journal setup video for you in the cards and in the description box down below if you wanna see that one. But that one was in shades of peach and orange and sort of messy circles and squiggly lines and dots, very abstract. And the color went with the outside of the notebook, the orange cloth. And I really liked how that turned out and thought it might be fun for my next next setup to kind of feel like it was part of a set so that later on, you know, 10 years from now when I'm flipping through old bullet journals, I can kind of see how these were done back to back and how they're sort of part of a set. So I'm using the same lettering that I did last time. I just really like the combination of the simple monoline cursive and this sort of scribbly bold serif font. So I'm reusing those. And then as far as the design elements go, I'm using two of the acrylographs that I created. This is Picheline, a nice dark olive, and then Evergreen, a really nice deep true green. And I thought these two colors looked so pretty together. The other green is called Fern and it's a lighter true green, but I thought the contrast between Picheline and Evergreen was really beautiful. So I decided to use these two. And of course, Evergreen was inspired by the color of this notebook. It's very close match. So they of course look really nice with the notebook itself. For the design, again, I wanted it to feel like it was part of a series with my last setup, but still distinct and different. So for this setup, I decided to go a little more squared off, creating squares and rectangles in these two green shades. And then for the black lines running through them and around them, I wanted those to be a lot more squared off as well, rather than fluid and curved and squiggly, a little more orderly, I guess. To add something a little different, I decided to round all of the corners of the squares and rectangles and of the lines. As I have for my last couple notebooks, I decided to name this bullet journal, and the name I chose this time around was Zamora, which from what I can tell from doing some research is a Spanish name that means wild olives. Felt appropriate since this is the olive notebook, the emblem on the front is an olive branch that I drew, plus it's a beautiful name. I'm using the black 0.7 millimeter acrylograph for the headers for the fonts, but for the lines themselves, I decided to use a Secura Micron in 08, just so that I could create them a little faster without having to wait the couple seconds that I have to wait for the acrylograph to dry. The difference is pretty minimal, but when you have a lot of spreads to set up, the difference does add up. As the final touch, once everything was dry, I did want to incorporate gold as I did last time. Last time I incorporated gold in some of the circles, but this time for something different, I thought again, I would go for something a little more linear. So for the gold accent in this setup, I decided to create these little groupings of parallel lines, just using gold watercolor from Fine Tech and a brush. I'm not being too precious with this, too careful. I just love the contrast of the bright gold with the darker shades of green, and I think it really finishes off the design. I'm doing the same thing I did last time, and I think also the time before that, which is adding in an extra fold out spread to the inner cover of my notebook. This is so that I can fold out my spread that shows the grid spacing or the measurements of the pages that I can use for reference while I'm setting up new spreads. I have found this to be so helpful in the past, so I definitely wanted to continue with this. And all I did was grab a large sheet of white construction paper, which is just slightly heavier weight paper than your standard printer paper, and cut it to size, folded it in half, and glued it in the inner cover. 
When I fold out that spread, I'm going to have my grid spacing on the left side, and on the right side is going to be the key. Now, for full transparency, I don't tend to reference my key anymore. I've used the same symbols for years and years. They're inspired by the original key as writer Carol created, with a couple added symbols for my own ease of use of the system, like a squared off bullet for work tasks so that I can distinguish them from personal tasks, and triangles to indicate when videos are going live on YouTube. Just little things that help me in my day-to-day -day life in YouTube using the bullet journaling system. I do like to include it. I feel like it helps my bullet journal to feel complete somehow. And I know that it's helpful for anyone watching my videos who is newer to bullet journaling to see the key that I use myself to give you some ideas for creating your own key. I think it's always really helpful to refer to the original system, but also to be able to shift and alter parts of the system, including the key to fit your own life to the best of its ability. Because when your bullet journal is as perfectly attuned to your life as possible, it's going to be the most helpful it can be as a system. Now that those initial few spreads are done, I'm going to flip to my next spread, which is going to be sort of the cover page of this setup. The 2022 header on the left side, and then a quote for this bullet journal on the right. The quote I chose for this bullet journal was, the best is yet to come. I picked this one just to kind of remind myself to keep a positive outlook. I think probably a lot of you can relate to the fact that the last couple years have been kind of rough. And as much as some amazing things have happened in my life in the last two years, it's also been really hard and some really scary and difficult things have happened. And I think I am definitely struggling with a little bit of burnout when it comes to not only my work, which I think a lot of people feel on a semi-regular basis, but also just life in general, the stresses of living in the current moment that we are trying to survive. It's a lot sometimes. And I'm trying to remind myself that better days are coming. You know, I still have a lot to look forward to. I am turning 30 in 2022. I can't even believe it. And as much as my 20s have been an absolute roller coaster, I have heard from many, many people that your 30s are even better than your 20s, and I'm excited for it. I think they will be, so I'm trying to keep it positive with this quote. What I love about picking more abstract themes for new bullet journal setups is just the fact that you can take a really simple design or simple concept and then shift it slightly from spread to spread and create something completely new each time. So just having different combinations of squares and rectangles in different dimensions, in different orientations, creating lines that loop a couple more times or come from a different direction, adding those gold lines in different quantities or in a different orientation, in a different spot. Each spread fits together because they are all, you know, very similar, but they have something unique about them. And it's very easy to come up with a slightly different version for each spread without having to completely drain your creativity on creating a bunch of spreads in your new bullet journal. So for me, it's a win-win. I love how these spreads turn out. And I also find that they're the kinds of spreads that I end up really enjoying. Even six months later, after using my bullet journal every single day, I still look at them and enjoy them, which is definitely a good thing. So now I'm working on my future log, which is one of the most important spreads of my new bullet journal setup. This is a spread that I typically use a lot, though I must say in the last two years, have used it a little bit less. <laughs> Surprisingly, I've had fewer events to go to in the last two years, who would believe that? But I'm crossing my fingers that 2022 will buck that trend, that I'll have more things going on and 
I'm moving forward, full speed ahead with my future log. I'm using my 2022 calendar stickers here from my shop. They are currently sold out. But if you go to my website, you can either buy a digital version that you can print at home yourself, or you can sign up for the wait list for the physical stickers. And if I do end up getting more supplies so that I can produce more, I can add more to the website and you'll be notified. For anyone new to the bullet journal system, the future log is really the core piece for future planning. So much of bullet journaling is about focusing on the here and now with not too much planning ahead. And while I personally have shifted some of the typical spreads or typical ways of using the bullet journal to my own need to plan ahead, the future log really fills in the gaps because most people don't set up their bullet journal for more than a month at a time. I know there are some of you out there who set up like a year all at once, which I mean, hats off to you. That seems like a lot of work, but it's probably really nice when you're actually using it. Let me know in the comments down below if you are a month by month person like me, or if you set up several months at a time or even a year. But for those of us who set up one month at a time, we don't have any set place to track future events. So if you have a dentist appointment five months out or it's your partner's birthday in a month and a half, you don't necessarily have a place in your bullet journal to put those things unless you have a future log where you can plan things for six months to a year in the future. I personally like to have all 12 months of the year in every bullet journal, even though my bullet journal only lasts me six months, just so that I can have a view of the entire year all at once, that bird's eye view, and be able to plan out my entire year even before I've made that second bullet journal for the second six months of the year. If I have a dentist appointment for November of 2022, I wanna be able to write it down. And when I create my new bullet journal, I can just migrate those events, appointments, reminders over. Very helpful. Moving on to the next spread here, which is going to be my Kanban board. This is a spread that I've talked about quite a few times on my channel, but if you're new, this is the spread that I use to track my video production. So I am a full-time YouTuber. My job involves wearing many hats. I do many different things every day, but my main focus is producing videos to post on YouTube every week. And my Kanban board is how I stay on top of that. I typically use either a small paper tab or a small piece of washi tape and I'll write the video title on it as well as the date that it's going live. And then I can just move it from section to section as I work on the video. This is something that isn't as necessary if I'm just working on one video at a time, which I do during the year, but especially around this time of year, which is coming up to Plant Miss. This is actually the last video going live before Plant Miss starts on the 14th. If this is your first Plant Miss on my channel, it is the time of year where I post a video every single day for the 12 days leading up to Christmas. My version of Vlogmas, which I remember being a huge deal when I first got on YouTube about a decade ago. There are also giveaways at this time of year. So be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications by hitting that little bell. So you get notified when Plant Miss starts and when each Plant Miss video goes live. So you can enter to win those giveaways and see all of the bonus content. But prepare Preparing for Plant Miss is the busiest time of the year for me. Putting up 14 videos in a month instead of my standard four to five, it's quite hectic. And my Kanban board becomes the hub, my <laughs> main place for planning at this time of year. I could not survive without it because I usually at this point have, you know, five videos that I'm filming simultaneously. I have three videos that I'm in the middle of creating a voiceover for. I have two videos that I'm color correcting. Everything is happening at once and it's easy for a video to fall through the cracks or to forget to do a certain step of the process. I still forget things because I'm human, but the Kanban board helps so much with this. Moving on to the next spread here, which is my waiting on and want need gifted spreads. These are the spreads that I use to keep track of any shopping that has to get done, any supplies that need to be purchased for my personal life, for my home, for work, everything. So the waiting on section is where I track incoming packages that have been ordered online. This has become especially important during the last two years because I have been doing way more online shopping than ever before. So this is the place where I just write where the item is coming from, when I'm expecting it to arrive, and then marking when it does actually arrive and crossing it off just so that I can follow up if something doesn't end up arriving. 
And then for the want, need, gifted side, this is just a place for me to keep track of things that I am planning on purchasing or, you know, lusting after to give myself some time to do research to find the best option or to find the best price. This spread is supposed to help me with impulse buys and it does a pretty good job. I definitely still sometimes buy something on impulse, but I do find that the spread helps. And the gifted section also helps for when brands send me something to to review or to share so I can keep track of everything that I've received that was gifted to me so I can make sure that I do whatever thing I'm supposed to do with it because it can get overwhelming and I can forget. Chewy was actually sitting on my lap for the whole first section of this video, cuddling and half asleep. And then all of a sudden he woke up and wanted to be on my bullet journal, as cats always do. Why are cats so attracted to bullet journals? I do not know. But unfortunately, I had several more spreads to make, so I couldn't let him go to sleep on my bullet journal. He did stay on my lap, though. He's been extra cuddly lately. Moving on to the next spreads here, and this is a very simple zoomed out view of work and personal tasks that have to get done. This is basically a brain dump or a master to-do list for work tasks and personal tasks that don't necessarily fit on my current weekly or in my current month, but are things that I don't want to forget to get done. So this might be a work task that I wanna do at some point this year, but it doesn't have to get done anytime soon. Or maybe I need to make a doctor's appointment, but it doesn't have to be right now. So I just drop it here so that I make sure I don't forget to make one eventually. This is a good catch-all spread for anything that pops into my mind that I don't wanna tackle right away, but I don't wanna forget. And I know I will forget it if I don't write it down, which is why I have a bullet journal in the first place. <laughs> And now we're on the final two spreads of the setup, my period tracker on the left and my date night tracker on the right. I've talked about my period tracker ad nauseum on my channel, on my Instagram. Follow me on Instagram, by the way, if you don't already. I just love my period tracker. I think it is so important for those of us who menstruate to be on top of our cycle, to have a place to track frequency of symptoms, to be able to see the length of our cycle and if anything is irregular. There are a bunch of apps that are great for this as well, which I also use, but there's something about an analog spread where I can look and see the entire year at once. I can see my cycle represented visually from this zoomed out view and it really highlights any inconsistencies, any irregularities, and it helps me to be able to work with my healthcare provider to make sure that I'm taking care of this part of my health that unfortunately can be so neglected because it's just not spoken about enough in my personal opinion. So if you menstruate, you definitely should have some sort of tracker, whether it's in your bullet journal or on your phone through an app, it really could save your life or make a huge difference in your quality of life. If you discover that there's an issue that you can treat that you catch way earlier because you're tracking your cycle. The way that I use this spread is I create a dot for every day of each month. So this is January through December along the top and then the dots moving down in columns are each day of each month. And I have a couple symbols that I use. I create gold dots for days that I am on my period. I create little circles around the day dot for days that I'm ovulating. And then I either cross through once or twice to indicate the two main symptoms that I'm keeping track of. Of course, you can use a bunch of different symbols. You can color code it. There are so many different ways that you could track a bunch of different things using a simple tracker like this. You might want to create a key if you have more things that you're looking at than I am, but honestly it can be super helpful and personally for me I find that tracking days that I'm menstruating, my ovulation date, and these two main symptoms, that's enough for me for this particular view and then in my app I'm able to get a lot more into the nitty-gritty details and track five billion different symptoms or things that I want to look at. This is just for the main things that I'm concerned with. So that is it for this setup. 
Now I'm gonna show you a flip through of every single spread. I really, really like how this more linear squared off version of this turned out. And I love these two colors together, the Picheline and Evergreen acrylographs are just mwah, chef's kiss, so good. I do believe that there are a couple of my collaboration notebooks still available on the Archer and Olive website and a couple bundles that come with these acrylographs if you wanna get these exclusive colors before they're gone forever. There should still be a couple left on the website. So I'll link the page with all my collaboration things in the description box if you wanna check them out, but I can't guarantee they won't be gone. I know a lot of them sold out during the Black Friday sale. So that is it for my new bullet journal setup for 2022. I am so excited to use this notebook and so excited for a brand new year. I would love to hear what kinds of spreads you always include in a new bullet journal setup. Are there spreads that is your must have spread, something that I included here, or is there a spread that you use that I haven't included? I would love to know, let me know in a comment. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video if you liked it. And of course, hit that bell notification because Plant Miss is starting in just a few days and you don't wanna miss it. Don't tell anyone I told you, but there is a giveaway on day one of Plant Miss and you'll only have 24 hours to enter. So hit that bell notification so you can enter that first of a couple giveaways for Plant Miss. Thank you so much for watching this video and for hanging out with me throughout 2021. It has been quite the roller coaster of the year, but hanging out with all of you has definitely been the highlight. And I'm excited to share Plant Miss with you and then jump in headfirst in 2022. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you really soon for day one of Plant Miss. Bye friends. Thank you so much to my patrons for your support. If you wanna join the squad, feel free. There's a link in the card and in the description box down below.